Welcome back. Let's take a look at what's happening in the world of sports with Millicent Walker. Welcome to Sports News. Tonight, Rivers Angels have emerged champions of the 2015-2016 Nigeria Women Premier League title. The Botaco Bay's outfit defeated Nasara Amazons 5-3 on penalties after the final playoff encounter had ended goalless at regulation time. Uti Joseph scored the decisive penalty to ensure Rivers Angels claimed a double after winning the Federation Cup in November 2016. The team have now won the Women League title for a record five times. In Ghana, which stood in 10 second half pressure to beat Mali 1 0 and reach the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations quarterfinals, skipper Samoa Gyan got the only goal in the 20th minute, heading in a cross from Jordan Ayu. The win puts the Black Stars into the last eight with a game to spare. Abdullah Said struck late as Egypt sent Uganda packing from the tournament with a 1 0 defeat. And Tottenham Hotspur came from behind to snatch a point at Manchester City. Gilfie Sigurdsson's goal 16 minutes from time gave Swansea a thrilling 3-2 victory at Liverpool. Benica Forbe rescued 2-2 draw for Bournemouth against Watford. Crystal Palace remained without a victory under Sam Allardyce as Seamus Coleman's late strike fired Everton to a 1-0 victory. Andy Carroll scored twice to make it back-to-back -back victories for West Ham. Meanwhile, Wayne Rooney scored an injury time equaliser at Stoke City to break Charlton's Manchester United goals record. Sunderland dropped to the bottom of the table after they lost 2-0 to West Brom. And Barcelona's coach Luis Enrique has described Andres Iniesta as an irreplaceable player. The influential captain will miss Sunday's La Liga trip to Aba with a calf strain. The Spanish midfielder was taking off at halftime in Thursday's Kings Cup quarterfinal first leg win at Real Sociedad. Rafinha has also been ruled out of the trip to Aba through injury, while defender Javier Manterano is suspended. Barcelona are third on the league table, two points behind leaders Real Madrid, but have played one game more than Zinedine Zidane's team. And Serena Williams has secured a comfortable 6-1, 6-3 victory over Nicole Gibbs at the Australian Open. The 22-time Grand Slam winner now faces 16 seed Barbora Stikova in the fourth round. Ekaterina Makarova overcame an injury timeout and a partial breakdown after she let Dominika Sibukova fight back from a set and a 4-0 deficit in the second to advance to the fourth round with a 10-6-2, 6-7, 6-3 victory over the sixth seed. Well, for the men, still at the Australian Open, Rafael Nadal reached the last 16, holding off a fierce challenge to be German teenager Alexander Zverev, 4-6-6-3-6-7-6-3-6-2. The Spaniard, a 2009 winner, needed to be at his resilient best to come out on top after more than four hours of quality shot making and thrilling rallies that earned both players a huge ovation from the Rod Laver Arena crowd. Nadal, who is bidding for a 15 Grand Slam title, will face Gail Monfils in his next game. Milos Raonic also advanced to the next round, beating dogged Frenchman Gail Simmons 6-2-7-6-3-6-6-3. Up next for Raonic, who made the semis last year, is 13 seed Roberto Bautista Agut.
And that's it on Sports News tonight. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent from Walkai. Back to Harriet for the rest of the news. Thank you, Millicent. Thousands of women protesters have gathered in cities across the world against what they describe as threats to womanhood by newly sworn in President Donald Trump. The rallies are part of more than 600 of such protests expected worldwide on President Trump's first full day in office. Meanwhile, a traditional post-inauguration interfaith prayer service has been held in honor of the president and his family at the Washington National Cathedral. Thousands participate in a huge rally in Washington, D.C. to protest against the new U.S. President, Donald J. Trump. The protesters are marching to promote women's rights, which they believe is under threat from the new administration. It's been a heart-rending time to be both a woman and an immigrant in this country. Our dignity, our character, our rights have all been under attack and a platform of hate and division assumed power yesterday. But the president is not America. His cabinet is not America. Congress is not America. We are America. Anti-Trump marches have also taken place in Australia, New Zealand, London, Germany, France, and in Asian cities such as Bangkok. In London, about 5,000 people attended the Women's March to demonstrate against Donald Trump. We have been alarmed by the comments he made during his election campaign. I'm talking about the derogatory remarks he made about women, about refugees, about migrants, about Muslim, and many other groups of people. And now, when he is president, we are truly hoping that he is going to hear the message that this march is sending to him today. Meanwhile, thousands of protesters in Sydney also joined the first of hundreds of women's marches organized around the world in a show of disapproval for the U.S. president. The message today is not just to Trump. The message today is to all the regressive political agendas around the globe, including those in Australia, that we're not going to be silent um, while there is still bigotry and sexism and racism uh, that's uh, part and parcel in national policy. So this isn't just this is not an anti-Trump march per se. This is a pro-equality march and a pro-human rights march. Amidst all these, President Donald Trump spent his first day in office attending a multi-fit service at Washington National Cathedral. He has also ordered agencies to ease the economic burden of the health laws known as Obamacare. The 70-year-old president takes over a country that was divided by the savage election campaign. And the main news again. Residents of Kalibage local government area in Borno State today called for urgent assistance from the federal government following losses from an airstrike that hit Ran settlement. Just as the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukuburatai, assured the people that there will be no repeat of the incident. And that's it on the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for spending time with us. I'm Harriet Agbini. Have a good night and enjoy your weekend.